Hi, I'm Pierre for Morales and welcome back to the series of videos where together we're learning how to code in Solidity. This is the third video of the series and today we're going to be looking at different data types, introducing new data types and using uh, together with them the old data types that we've learned in the previous videos to try and build something interesting. Let's get to it. So we're back in Remix, the ID that we've been using from the start of the series. Uh, and you can see here that the only thing I did is added a new file called uh, data types uh, because that's the topic of today's video. So as usual, we need to start by just declaring the version of Solidity that we are going to be using. So I'm going to do this right here. Okay, and we create, you know, just a contract. I'll call it my contract because it's just there as an example. So data types, we've seen a couple already. We've seen uint, we have used it in previous videos. uint is a unsigned integer. Um, basically what this means, the most important part for us is that it's a number that has to be uh, greater than zero. So uint you declare it in the following way. So uint you can make it public or not. Public means that it'll be accessible from outside the contract. And you give it a name, my uint equals one another data type similar to this one is int which is just an integer and this has a much wider range and an integer can be uh, greater or smaller than zero and you declare it also the same way my int equals minus one you int can be declared in, in different ways as well. You see here, there's a list actually of uh, in, yeah, of all the values that can follow a uint. What this does is declares the bytes uh, that uh, can be assigned to this variable. And really what this does is uh, is just declare the range and uh, and tell Solidity what range this, uh, var this value can be attributed. So then we also have strings. And strings are also declared just the same way uh, these other variables are declared, which is, you know, string public, give a name to the variable, and then give a value to the variable. And finally, we have Boolean values. So Boolean values are uh, true or false values, and they're declared the same way. So, oops, public my bool equals true so a boolean uh, thanks to its true and false values it can be used to evaluate uh, you know an, an if statement or in solidity uh, the require statement that we saw last time uh, just to make sure that uh, the rules that you're setting are are correct okay now something that we didn't see up until now is that there's this new keyword, I mean new, for us new, that we can add that is called constant. And what this means is that the value that we're attributing to this variable will always be the same. And it will be impossible for any user, any address to change this value. That's uh, great uh, to avoid some uh, debugging uh, and simply avoid certain you know loopholes in your code uh, because you never know um, what kind of bug can can can, can come up? Um, this uh, this allows you to to avoid this. Okay, so now let's move on to uh, something else. I'm going to delete all of this, and um, I'm going to create a new a new type, and we're going to look at it in a second. But I'm going to change this, and I'm going to change the name to my game, because we're going to do something where we're going to be taking a look at players. So. The new data type is called struct. In struct types, they're, uh, they're used to represent a record. They kind of allow you to create your own data type. So suppose you want to keep track of books in your library. Well, then you might want to track certain attributes about each of the book. You know, the title, the author, the subject, and its ID in, in your database. Structs allow you to do that. They're similar to um, objects in other object-oriented languages. So, okay, struct. We're going to call our struct player. So now what this allows us is to, you know, call um, this uh, player 
and it'll allow us to create new instances of this player with the attributes that we select to input here. So, you know, string, first name. Yeah, your player needs a first name. And of course, your player also needs a last name. Okay, and that's it. That's all we need to do. And then what we can do is we can come here and create a new function that allows us to add a player. So, you know, add player string first name. Now, there is one requirement for these struct uh, uh, data types. That is the way we call this, this uh, attribute. We need to specify how it will be saved, um, how, how this data will be saved. And we're going to be using memory for now. There's, uh, there's other types uh, of choices here, but uh, we're not going to cover this now. We'll cover it when we need it in some next video. So first name and also the same thing, memory for the last name. Of course, we want this to be a public function. And here we go. So what is this function going to do? It's going to basically just create a new player. So player, first name and last name. So it's going to take these values that we pass through and simply call this and create a new player. Now, I think uh, what we can do is we can we can roll it out and see. So I compile it. Everything works and I can come here and, and deploy it. So once it deployed, you see confirmed here, um, I can open this up and we have the possibility to add a new player here and let's do it. So, you know, we add John. So, right, so comma separated because uh, our function takes two, two values. Add player and you see we get confirmation. But now the problem is that there is no way for us to access this, this value. We cannot refer back to it. We cannot find it. So we need to kind of change that. What we can do is we can create here. We can write this down and I'll cover it in a second. Okay, so what we're declaring here is a new variable called players and we're making it public. And what we're doing in this first part is saying that we want an array, so a list of the data type player. So our list, our array players will only hold values of this struct player. And in that case, what we can do here is we, when we add a new player, we want to create it using this code right here, but we want to, at the same time, add it to this list. So simple enough, players dot push, and we push this value here. And that's it. I can compile this and then deploy it. I delete this one. Okay. So now I can add a player. And you see, I have the players uh, uh, array here available. And what it takes right now to call it is this uint. Now, the reason for that is because this is an array and we can get the values from the array based on their index. Um, this is a zero based index, which is uh, uh, quite standard in programming. What this means is that the first value in this array is at index zero, right? So the, to get the first element, we call index zero. So let's do it here. We have added just one element. So it will be at index zero. And if I click on players, it gives us, you see, name John, last name, Bo. Okay, but now the thing with these arrays here is that in Solidity, we don't have the option to get the count. We cannot know how many players are in there actually. So we kind of need to go around that and we need to create our own variable to track this. So to do this, we create uint public and we're going to call it player count and we initiate it at zero. So when this contract is called, the player count is originally zero. And what we're going to do here is simply add the fact that player count plus equals one. So each time a new player is added, 
after that we just increment this value by one and if we deploy this okay so you see we have uh, this new uh, player count value here so if we had a player just like this it is done now i can get the player count and the player count says one if i go and add a second john doe and now i call player count again we see that there's two and here we can access the first john doe we created using index zero and we can access the second one using index one no difference here but you see that the call happened here okay so that's uh that's kind of cool already but um it's not always um great to have to call um using the index right because you can get lost um and depending on how your application is built you might need to to be able to reference to that uh, uh, player and get his attributes in a more flexible way and we can do this by um querying the address of uh, the user but to do this, we have to change. We get rid of this list. And we're going to create a mapping, just like we did in the previous video. If you didn't watch it, I recommend you go check it out. So we're going to create a mapping of an address to... Whoops. To a player. Yeah. So we'll record an address, and this address will link us to this struct. Of course, we make it public. And we're going to call this players. Yeah, so same name because it's the list of our players, basically. Um, okay, so now we kind of have to change this because, of course, we're no longer pushing this because it no longer is a list. So I'm going to get rid of this. And the way we uh, populate this now is by going players message.sender. So this is how we populate the first part, which is the address. Of, uh, so the first part of the mapping. And we say of player first name last name but you know what we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna also here just add the address just to keep the the first name and the last name of the player inside of this uh, struct uh, data type okay and so here what well, we need to add it too so it'll be message dot sender awesome so now the way it works is uh slightly different if i compile this and deploy it get rid of this okay so now right here if we add a new player john so then our player count is one and we can get this player no longer using his index but using his address so this is the address right now yeah because i have added this is the message.sender so i copy this and i add it here and it allows me to get all of the value all of the info from this player so you see we get his address we get his first name and his last name awesome so that's uh, quite useful already uh, but what we can do is we can introduce a new data type and this data type is a enum so an enum restricts a variable to have only a one of a few predefined values the values in the this uh, enumerated list are called uh, enums and with the use of enums we can lower the the number of bugs uh, in the code simply because we uh, lower the risk that a variable will be uh, what can lead to an error uh, later in the future so for example if we consider an application for a fresh juice shop it would be possible to restrict the class size to small medium large um, and this would make sure that it would not allow any more sizes to be ordered which wouldn't be anyway available by the juice shop but we can build our own example on, on what we've been coding so far so what we're going to do is we're going to create an enum but we're going to call it level because what we're going to try and do is register the level of our player right here so level and we just you know curly brackets and we're going to have three level 
types. We have novice, intermediate, and advanced. So whatever value is set for this enum can only be one of these three. And we're going to come and add it here to our player. So you see, just as we've done here, address string string, we first need to de describe what data type we're going to be adding. So it's level, level data type, right? And we're going to call it player level. Okay. And so now the only thing we need to do is uh, also uh, add this value when we're creating our player. And of course, when you have a new player, well, this new player has to be a novice. So what we're going to do here is what we're going to call level dot novice. And it will add this value to our player and then increment it. Okay, awesome. And let's just go test this out. Deploy, rid of this. Okay, so if I had a player, John, so at the player, great. We have one player and we can go and get this player using the address, players. And it gives us back the information, including the player level, which is zero because an enum is also zero index base, which means that novice will be zero, intermediate will be one, advanced will be two. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add another player, but we're going to use a, a different address. Let's use this one here. And uh, it's going to be Pierre Doe. So John Doe's brother is Pierre Doe. And this address, we copy it here and we replace the value with this one. Uh, well, first, let's, let's add the player. Okay, added. So now our player count is two. And if we go and get this value, you see it changed now and it's getting Pierre Doe. So referencing the address, we can get all of the information about our player. Awesome. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how we can get just particular attributes here. And I'll show you. So we're going to create a function that we're going to call get player level. And you've guessed it. It's going to allow us to get the level of whatever player that we query. And we're going to query it using the address of the player. Uh, public view so view mm, basically is used for such functions that only allow you to get some some value and make sure that this function will never change any variable anything in the contract so view and we want it to return the data type level and what our function is going to do is simply return players so it's going to use the player address that we provide in the call to fetch from our mapping players the, the player in question. And we want it to return the level of the player, this value here. And, and that's it. And so now if I just come here, compile it, deploy, we have our new contract here. We see get player level. So now if I create John Doe again, add the player, okay, should be here, yes it is, and now using his address, I can just input the player address right here, get player address, uh, sorry, get player level, gives me the level of the player, which is of course novice, which is the first value here. And so down here I'm just uh, adding the new uh, data types that we looked at today and the new, just the new, um, you know, keywords as well. So we, the first one is constant, the one that allows you to, uh, you know, tell Solidity that a variable cannot be changed um, after it has been uh, declared. Uh, struct enum, uh, just the definitions here. And also I'm reminding how we create an array. This is the code that we had just earlier, which means that we're creating an array players that we're making public and it is going to be an array. This is what is saying that it's an array of the struct player. So keep this, um, you know, maybe do a print screen, whatever you prefer. Um, you can keep this as part of your, uh, your cheat sheet. Okay, so that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. I'm Pierre for Morales. We'll be back very soon for the fourth video of the series. 
and uh, just uh, take care. See you then.